Fight fans, we're back at Gladiators of the Cage 19. Let us go to the tail of the tape for our fourth fight of the evening. Our tail of the tape, Charles Mick O'Brien. He's 26 years old. He's five. Go to the tail of the tape here. Charles O'Brien's 26 years old. He's five foot six inches tall. He weighs in at 175 pounds with a record of one and two. Actually, I believe that weight is wrong. He weighed in at 150 pounds. Making his debut at Gladiators of the Cage and MMA is 22 year old Dylan Weston. He's 5'8", 150 pounds also, fighting at a catch weight of 150. His record once again, 0-0, debut. Let's go now for the ring introductions. You hear the music now for the blue corner of Mick O'Brien, Charles, a.k.a. Mick O'Brien. He likes to go by Mick. One and two record, Rich. Uh, I've had the privilege to watch these younger guys come up, and each time that I see them, they're making advancements. They're learning, and last fight at Gladiators of the Cage 18, Mick finally got his first victory, a hard-fought split decision. You could see the relief on his face when they announced it. Mick was the winner, and, uh, you know, going up against a debut fighter, it's a tough thing to fight and make your debut against the seasoned guy. Well, you don't exactly know what to expect. There's no film to study. The only thing you have is maybe recent history. Maybe he wrestled. Maybe he's a karate student. But we have no idea what this guy's capable of. He could be an absolute monster. He could not be. But you got to give him credit for making his debut. It's very, very, very tough to go in there and fight in front of all these people. Yeah, and you know what? Any time that I was getting one of my fighters ready or preparing him for a fight, I'll be honest, I didn't like the fact of fighting a guy with a bunch of experience for my new fighter. So obviously the corner of Dylan Weston and his trainers have a lot of confidence in him because they're letting him go against a guy who's already fought three times, you know, and uh, they say, hey, this kid, he's ready and he can do this. And they have a lot of confidence those jitters aren't going to get to him. It's funny, Mick, I've talked to him. I had a chance to see him before the show and uh, he's excited about the fight. He's kind of acknowledged some of the things he needed to work on. And that wasn't a sign of weakness, Rich. That's a great sign of strength. When you as a person or as a fighter can self-critique yourself and say, hey, I need to get better at this, not only in the fight game, but in life, you're able to grow and you're able to get better. And that's kind of what Mick said. He looked straight in the eyes and said, look, I've been working a lot on my stand-up. I'm working on my striking. I'm not ignoring my jujitsu. Believe me, I'm working on that, but I've mainly been focusing on the striking. Well, that's good. It's always good to see somebody change. Now, he's going against Dylan Weston. Who, like we were talking about, eight. he has one year of MMA experience. He's not like very many. Everybody who wants to be an MMA fighter just wants the label to be an MMA fighter. He took a year of training before he decides to make his debut. So it, he could shock us a little bit. Yeah, that's right. And, you know, the interesting thing, it's funny. When someone says they have a year of training, you just say they have a year of training. But you ask the question, and we've kind of seen this from training a lot of times, did you have a year of training one evening a week? Did you have a year of training two evenings a week? Or was you at the gym or at your dojo five, six, seven days a week for two, three hours a day? That makes a huge difference there, Chuck. And, and he's surrounded by a great team, the Matt Factory. As you can see, there's Dom Mazzotta right there, and I'm sure they train together a good bit. And you know his work ethic then. That's the next thing. You know this kid's work ethic. And I've said it so many times that it's kind of become a cliche with my friends, but eagles fly with eagles. You know, if you want to soar to heights, you must go where the eagles are and dare to fly. And that's what these younger guys are doing. It's actually an interesting fact. He may be making his debut in what we, you know, of MMA, but he's got a lot of experience under his belt. This young guy has fought and he's been around, you know. Uh, it's not just his first time in, in combative sports or anything like that. This young man has trained uh, a long time, actually. He's been a wrestler since he was a child. He trains out of the mat factory, like you said, but he's been a wrestler for 18 years. And that toughness that's built into a wrestler, Rich, you're a former wrestler yourself, where I started on the other side more into the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. What you already have instilled in you is something extremely valuable when you enter into this sport. You can't just get it out of anywhere. And Pennsylvania is a great, great wrestling state. Not everybody knows. They're 
maybe the top three states for wrestling. They Great take it very junior serious. Olympic program. They take it very, very serious. Uh, me coming from Connellsville, we very, very serious, and it just uh, it, it builds determination in you like none other. It's a way of life. It really is a way of life. I believe we're ready now for Dan Bogan and the ring introduction of the fighters. First fighting out of the blue corner, he weighed in at 149 pounds. Jiu-Jitsu is his specialty, he stands 5 feet, 5 inches tall, 26 years of age. His record is one win, two losses. He represents Gracie and EPA from Williamsport, Pennsylvania. Nick, the problem, O'Brien! And his opponent fighting out of the red corner, he weighed in at 150 pounds. He's a wrestler standing 5 feet 8 inches tall, 22 years of age, making his debut tonight in front of you. He fights for the Met Factory in Lower Pearl. He hails from Butler, Pennsylvania, Dylan Weston, a free chipster. Okay, gentlemen. Sir, are you ready? Sir, are you ready? Come on, let's bang. We're ready now for the fourth fight of the evening. It's underway, and this fight is brought to you by the Rehab Center. Well, there you can see the takedown. I kind of expected that by Dylan Weston. Very strong takedown. Mick really threw the hands, though, made him work for it, and he just scooped it up and took it. See that Mick might have wanted to pull guard in some kind of way. It seems like he was kind of willing to go down at that point. Yeah, interesting fact, when I was talking to Dylan, I really like both of these guys. Dylan doing a great job of working the body. Uh, he actually was, something that really struck me, how he likes to give back. He is so good at his wrestling that he's actually a trainer at the mat factory for the younger guys, a youth, a youth coach. He's getting a little rowdy. He was doing a good job, but he's getting, letting his hands drop. He needs to regroup. I know it's those debut jitters, but Mick is throwing some heavy punches. He doesn't want to get caught, but once again, he takes a real quick takedown. And it could go either way. It could be a takedown. He could have pulled guard, but either way, he's not in a dominant position right now. And Dylan spine, is doing man. a great job for his debut. He is punching to the body every chance he gets. You know, that's something we trained on really, really hard. Work the body, work the body, work the body. If you can punch the body, punch the body. Good job, though. Mick, I'll tell you, from his last appearance, he's getting a lot better at working. But this is going to be a very difficult job to get up on this young man because Dylan is a beast on the ground. Dylan got his back right now. This is dangerous. Oh, look how he just drags oh, he's him back. In that choke looks deep. Mick look is in deep. trouble. He's he knows it. What a debut for this young man. Great job, Dylan Weston. Congratulations on your you first okay? ever victory in MMA. He just came out confident. He came out confident. He knew where he wanted to take the fight. He wanted to take it to the ground. I'm not sure if he wanted to smit him, but he was throwing hands on the ground, opening something up, and it opened up, and he took advantage of it. Great, great job. You can see the frustration in Mick's eyes, but he gets up with kind of a smile. You know, you can't, what can you say? It was just a great performance and a debut by masterly, masterfully crafted victory by Dylan Weston. I enjoyed watching that fight a lot. Really nice young man. Both of these guys I'm fans of. And uh, speaking with him earlier, you know, he's uh, devout to his church. He, he goes to church every week. He's a very, very nice young man, very respectful, loves giving back, helping the youth. It's good to see somebody like that come out with a debut, win their first match against a tough opponent, Mick O'Brien, who I, I, I'm just a fan of because he always comes out to fight. And you got to love it. And great job tonight. Great and job. On, Dylan, on Dylan's behalf, he is going to inspire a good bit of people with this debut because he coaches youth wrestling. Yeah, exactly. And could you imagine how many people sat and watched this fight at home and they're just looking up to him? I imagine there's a lot of people on, you know, right now online on Gladiators of the Cage, on the, on the feed, on the live stream Pittsburgh, and they're actually watching that fight. And I imagine a bunch of kids right now cheering and jumping up and down because I'm sure they look up to this guy. Dylan seems to be a class act in every way. I just met him this today, but obviously it's his debut and really, really impressed by him. Not only as a fighter, but a person. Let's check out the replay really quick here. I think we have one ready. And uh, once you again, Rich, take it over. Here it is. He was throwing punches to the body in order to open something up. Jiu-Jitsu is not about just, it's right there. You have to play a game. It's chess, it's not checkers. Exactly, very well put. And look at the force he pulls that choke back. He, and he and he squeezed with all his might, and it's not very long until 
Charles O'Brien decided to tap. You could tell Mick was just really frustrated. But hey, I mean, great fighter. Let's go to Dan Bogan for the official announcement. Very, very classy in victory. Very, very classy. And w something that really struck on me, we talked about his faith, and he first off gave thanks to God, and, and that's great to hear, you know, somebody acknowledging, you know, that there's greater power than themselves that gives them strength. And secondly, how many people something like this affects that his uncle going through this tough time, and it's like out of a rocky scene. What's he say? Win. Win. That's what Adrian, the famous words. It's amazing Win. how fights like this inspire people and pull people closer together in hard times. And we've seen that happen a couple times tonight. And uh, kudos. Awesome, awesome stuff. Um, coming up next, we're going to have our fifth fight of the evening. I believe it's our last amateur bout of the evening before we get into the professional fights, uh, which we're also going to have four of those. So we have a total of five fights remaining on the card. And boy, if it's any indication what we already have seen, what's to come. I think we're going to have a pretty action-packed night because some of the heavy hitters are coming out soon with a lot of implications. We're talking retirement match. A little bit about that, Rich. I know you've been around the sport even longer than me, maybe, as far as personality-wise with different interactions in gyms. Tell us about the main event. Uh, Mark Cherico has did a lot, a lot for this, for the local MMA scene for Pittsburgh. I started in 2009 when Mark Cherico, I remember watching his first fight, it was, it was something incredible. And you could tell he was just a special, special athlete. And he just, he just keeps improving every, every, every time. Yeah. And it's just going to be something to watch. And it's kind of going to be heartbreaking seeing him go. Yeah. He inspired a lot of people in the air and done a lot for the sport. And kudos to him and his excellent career. Right now, we're going to take a quick commercial before we get to our last amateur bout of the evening at Gladiators of the Cage 19. 